Lost Ark is a game that requires much of you. The many complex systems and gameplay loops that it offers in return give players a great many things to do. However, much of the challenging content only begins when a character has reached level 50. Endgame activities such as Chaos and Abyssal Dungeons as well as Guardian Raids are vital for your character's progression as that is where you'll get items, resources, and gear that are useful. There is a lot of merit to being able to get a character to level 50 in a quick and efficient manner. Not only do alts provide additional income and resources, they are an alternate way to experience the game. Hello all, my name is QuickTab and today we will be looking at what you can do to make your leveling experience in Lost Ark a seamless one. In this guide, I aim to provide you with tools and skills that you will need to make the trek from the sandy shores of Lutera to the rising peaks of Vern as painless as possible. This is not a guide on how you can play a specific class, but a detailed compilation of advice that will see you through your entire leveling quest. I will be releasing leveling guides for each individual class, so subscribe to learn how to get the best out of your next character. I have personally used all of these methods in my leveling on multiple characters and I can confirm they are effective. There will also be some great UI tips and tricks that you can use to enhance your progress even more at the end of the video. Before we get started, I would like to say that I do not recommend you make this a rushed experience. Nor is this a guide that you should be strictly following for your first character. This is not the point of this guide. I urge you to take your time, visit every corner, watch every cutscene, and do as many side quests as you desire. There are no requirements here, only things you can do to get from one great moment to the next seamlessly and without hassle. That being said, if you follow every step in this guide, skip all cutscenes and side quests, and purely follow the main quest, then you will hit 50 in about 12 hours of play. My personal recommendation is that you take it a bit slower and enjoy the story moments. Even so, this guide will get you to your goal in about 16 to 20 hours, assuming a normal pace and some side content. Without further ado, let's set sail. Your first trial will be the tutorial and prologue. This is something you can skip entirely. It offers no value in terms of story or gear, and skipping it saves you around 30 minutes. Once past that, you will find yourself in Prideholm, where your journey actually begins. You will want to follow the main quest, marked by this icon, and progress the story. This will be your follow-through line from now on. The main quests can and will get you from start to 50 without the need of any side content. If you wish to get there as fast as possible, then this is the way to do it. Follow the main quest and don't stray. Of course, we will go over some side content you should do, as well as some separate steps the story will take as you move through it. One piece of alternate content you must do is your pet quest, which can be found here pretty early on. These purple markers are known as adventure quests and can be found in your journal. Pets are a great help as they provide passive bonuses to your character and act as loot vacuums, making it so you never have to worry about picking up drops. Also, they're super cute. I also recommend you do the appropriate adventure quests for your gathering skills and to learn about engravings. We will have separate guides for these coming soon, but for now, pick them up when they are available as they don't take much time and don't stray you from the main quest. The first major unlocks for you come early on by way of your mount and the triport system. These two methods of transportation are crucial for you to maintain a quick pace. First, let's discuss the triport. This is Lost Ark's waypoint system and it's very simple to use. You unlock a triport point by visiting it once and activating it. After that, you are able to transport to it for a small fee. I encourage you to use this system often and freely. The money spent is negligible and it will severely cut down on your travel time. Anytime you finish an objective, a dungeon, or an instance quest, always look for the triport nearest to where you'll be going next and port to it, then use your mount. Mounts are accessible in most outside areas, aside from some instant content and can even be used in some indoor locations. Mounting will always be faster than walking or using your abilities if the distance is more than a few screens of length. When neither triports nor mounts are available, you want to be using your character's movement abilities. Depending on your class, these will vary, but all classes have at least one movement ability as well as your evade. Spam these all of the time when trying to get to places. It may seem like these little motions don't matter, but over the course of 15 hours, they make a big difference. 
Your mindset when traveling anywhere should be, check for a nearby triport, then mount up to get to the location, use dashes and abilities when mounting is not available, or to travel short distances. Once you get into this habit, you'll find that traveling from quest objective to marker becomes much smoother and a natural flow starts to arise. Aside from these methods, there are also minor movement improvement tools which you can use in the world. These come in the form of consumables, primarily swiftness robes and marching flags. Swiftness robes increase your movement speed by 40% for a short duration. These are great for places where mounting is not available, but you are still able to use your abilities. Marching flags apply an area buff that moves with you. The buff increases movement speed for everyone within the area by 20%. They should be used when moving through dungeons to help your party cut down on time. There are many other types of consumables in the game, however, all of which can be used to improve your progress. Let's talk about healing potions. There are two types of healing potions you will see in your adventures. HP potions, which heal a percentage of your health in a single go, and healing potions, which heal a flat rate over time. It is very important that you only use healing potions which heal the flat rate. Do not use HP potions which heal based on your percentage health. You want to save these for endgame content as they scale with your level and are extremely valuable. This is a mistake many new players, including myself, make when going through the game and it can be very expensive in the long run. If you are ever in a situation where you are going to die and only have HP potions to heal you, save them and die instead. If you do happen to die, then Phoenix Feathers are your friend. Use them freely as needed for those comeback moments and to down the boss, much faster than walking back. Finally, damage items such as bombs should be used regularly to clear large groups when your cooldowns are up. These are also effective at speeding up boss encounters and dungeon runs. Dungeons themselves form a considerable part of your gameplay experience as you level. Not only are they integrated into the story itself, they also offer most of the gear you will need to keep up with the content. They are a beast of their own and become progressively longer and more complex over the course of the game. However, like everything else here, there are things that you can do to counteract these issues. First, I recommend that you queue for the normal version of the dungeon as often as you can. If speed is your goal, then this is your best method. The content will be considerably easier and you will gain the same amount of experience you would from a heart version. If, instead, you want to gather the best gear to give yourself a long-term advantage in terms of stats, then hard versions will be the way to go. I did a mixture of both and always found myself several gear levels higher than I needed to be. Some of this gear will include accessories, which are additional stat boost items that will improve your overall performance and damage. Always look for these with crit and specialization as these stats spread the best among all classes. A beautiful thing about dungeons is that unlike the open world, mobs will aggro to you more aggressively and do their best to follow you. This should always be abused. Instead of clearing small groups of enemies that will rush you as you move through, instead run past them until you reach the checkpoint in the section that you are in. The mobs will follow you, gather into large groups which you can then AoE into dust, allowing you to move on to the next section. Here is a great place to use those consumables I mentioned earlier. This method not only removes the repeated start and stop of clearing small groups, it also makes your runs a single experience as you will run to the door, clear the mobs, and then the door you are at will open. There are sections in stories where this method works as well, but for the most part it is reserved for dungeons. Once you complete the dungeon, always look for the triport nearest to where you are going next. Using the Song of Escape will be a thing, but not until much later. This cycle of story and dungeons will see you through a large portion of the game. You'll follow the main quest line from Pride Home through East Lutera. This will see you to around level 37. At this point, the main story will end at a quest called Finding the Arcs, which will show you no markers on the map. Here you will also receive your ship, which will act as your new main way to level until you reach North Vern and level 50. Once this happens, you want to follow world quests, which are marked by this icon. You will be led to Tortoik, then Annika, and finally Arthentine. Each island is self-contained. You will be led from start to finish in it, and then be pointed to where you have to go next. At this point, the Song of Return becomes your go-to for exiting dungeons and instances. Most of the quests on the island continue just outside the location as opposed to near a triport. You should always be checking your map regardless, but have this one handy for when you need it. 
Once the quest line is finished in Arthentine, you will be level 50. Depending on what other content you did, there is a high likelihood that you will hit the cap before the story is over. Regardless, you will need to finish it in order to move on to Vern and the endgame activities. Unfortunately, gaining experience after 50 from the story will have very little effect on your progress. The path from 50 to 60 is an entirely different beast which we'll be covering in a future video. Congratulations! You did it! Be proud and gaze upon your shiny new character! At this point, you have a number of options to follow including the aforementioned dungeons, raids, and your awakening quests, all of which will be accessible in Vern. Now would be a good time to slow down, kick back, and enjoy the sights. Go fishing for a bit, or see about getting into the transmog system. The first part of your quest is over, but you have much more ahead, and that part will take time. Now, if you've made it this far into the video, you've gotten to unlock the extra special super secret tips and tricks section. These are little quality of life habits to develop as you play, which will serve you well in your quests. Keep your inventory clean and organized as you play by using the dismantle feature on all items and gear that becomes obsolete. All material created from this are stacked, saving you loads of space and time. Use your hotbar. All of your consumables, emotes, and your mount can be put on your hotbar for easy use. This is much faster than clicking or having to search through your bag. Traveling to a triport can be done from the overlay map on tab by holding alt left click on the desired one, much faster than going through the world map. The same command allows you to set an auto path while on your ship. Use this to chart your course and then let it run as you restock on snacks and empty your bladder. The open sea is full of treasures and picking up barrels as you sail will refresh your ship's speed boost. It's not necessary to go out of your way for these but on your path should always be picked up. Also keep in mind you can teleport to the port from any part of the continent by hitting the ready to sail button in your world map. This is a quick way to return to your ship and continue on your journey once a particular world quest chain is over. Finally, be sure to pace yourself and enjoy the game. There is no need to rush through and no life this content. All of these tips can be applied and you can pick and choose from them and custom make to your own experience. There is nothing wrong with doing side quests and taking your time to fish and cut trees. It's a game, have fun with it! Once again, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next one.